Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to, well, another upload from truly this calendar. And we're going to go about the tier changes for this um, this October. This might very well be the last significant change for uh, the Generation Seven meta. That's of course moving forward. I think we're roughly two months away, uh, or two, one and a half, I believe. Um, for um, the Sword and Shield, so this change, while important, are in the long run may or may not actually be that interesting. But it's fun talking about because we are now moving towards a meta that are um, close to having no changes at all, and I think the changes that are major are interesting to kind of talk about why they are so significant. Uh, so we're gonna move from, of course, um, <laughs> from. Uh, left to right, I'm gonna have this stagnated picture as a whole because time constraints. And quite frankly, I think this picture kind of fills the void of what is actually going on. So first and foremost, things that move from the ban list of UU to OU is Manaphy, uh, Latios, and Sableye. I couldn't tell you why uh, they are used more often than before. Uh, Manaphy as a whole, really, really good in its own right, but also very good when it comes to combined in rain team. So I can only see it being good with Swampert as being really just good. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, Latios is having a high viability as a whole, and I can only assume that when it was dropped down and banned, that people actually took notice that it has a high viability. It's really good at defogging or really just set up. It, it works well. And Mega Sableye, always viable for any type of stall teams. It is the core to that team as a whole so it doesn't necessarily matter that it's moved down and upwards because it's just as viable as before just it's it's a matter of definition of the team itself um, one thing that's really big and i want to kind of cover this is that OU dropped Mew to UU I thought that sadly that uh, Mew was banned from UU so I might have gone to Twitter and saying that it isn't it's a Mew New C that is banned from UU and not Mew itself uh, Mew has been in UU before but uh, was moved up rather quickly uh, before Ultra Sun and Moon, of course. Uh, besides that, like Mew is one of those Pokemon that people are, um, me included, uh, rate very highly in League, but may or may not actually be that viable in um, OU. That said, it's hardly a bad Pokemon, and it has relevant checks in UU, so it might actually stay there. But the, the merits of Mew is not that it gets, or it has a ridiculous stats or anything like that. In theory, it's worse than Manaphy and Yurashi, but it is the mood pool and being unpredictable and being very good at doing whatever it wants that kind of makes it really good. It's a jack of all trades and does everything above average. Uh, of course, the Stallbreaker set is going to be viable. Um, the defensive, supportive, disruptor set with will o -S turn, um Stealth Rocks and Defog and whatnot and Softball uh, probably going to be the most set we see because it is a really good defensive type as a whole so using his defensive capabilities might be very well <laughs> good for it that said though i don't know how significant viable will be in ou it's really, really interesting seeing this october how this moves about or it even gets banned because of its well this defensive stats you know, defensive sets that are so relevant for it well, we might actually never know about that uh, or that's, that's the point, we're going to find out whether or not it works. Um, Barbara Color from RU to NUBL, it could only be a usage situation because Barbarical is as viable as ever in RU. Uh, the Shell Smash set together with Rock MC are really good, very hard to stop. Um, together with Yuxi with dual, um, dual screens, it's, it's tough to break down. There really aren't that many responses properly to it. Bulky Waters can fend it off and we have, we have a logic for that. But that's really about it. That's the only Pokemon I can kind of top of my head see as direct checking it. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, it's down, but I hardly think it has anything to do with its ability. Uh, then we have both Quagsire and Frostlass moving from PU to UU. A really big race, if you ask me. Quagsire, I can only say like this, and I think people kind of get that. It is a core for stall teams. It is a really good check towards the likes of Lucario. Uh, it is a really good check to a Scissor. Uh, to an extent, uh, Latios, if it doesn't carry energy ball, which it rarely does. And basically, Unaware do keep this Pokemon flow quite effectively. Um, it could be as a, a sole response, but it works better in stall teams. Um, and, and that's kind of where Frostlass fall too. Um, Frostlass 
actually might actually work very well with these stall teams, but it is most used as a hyper a hyper offensive kind of response. It's an anti lead with spikes uh, and taunt, so it breaks other leads. It makes short work out of actually others other possible um, or to say defoggers and, and stealth rockers is hit the super effectively with uh, ice and whatnot. The only merit that goes against Frostless as a whole is that it has only 80 special attack and attack so it isn't hurting anything but super effective ice beam still does a lot of damage but it is a spike aspect, it's a taunt aspect and it actually could be uh, staying UU as long as Mew is there as it has in theory a chance to stop the more defensive sets. So it's really cool to see Frostless here. It's always been viable in UU, it just hasn't been raised to UU. Uh, it pairs like it pairs very, very well also with Laudios and uh, Scissor as uh, it does kind of support them with, like I said, the spikes, but also use a natural switching. It, I like it. Uh, really cool to see Frostless getting back to fame uh, because people are sleeping on this Pokemon because of its lackluster attack stat. It is just a nuisance to deal with. I love using the Culber Willowitz set at Wayward Pain Split. It's so annoying uh, for Pokemon or to people to fend that off unless they're especially offensive and usually since it is an ice type after all, physical offensive Pokemon are the ones that does better. Uh, for example, Cobalion is a natural response to this Pokemon and being able to Wisp it and Pain Split it and then possibly actually win versus is because of the reduction of HP together with of course reduction of its offensive stats. Yeah, it's, it stands out. Probably not the best comparison, but it has worked. Just not necessarily that reliable. Plus you can whisk Willow Wisdom and then people, things get really rough fast. Um, and then we have something really interesting here in Samurott and a Mega Bomb is now moving up to PUBL or to NU from PUBL. It uh, should be noted that Samurott actually got a fair uh, upgrade by Smogons themselves, talking about how anti-meta Samurott really is. Bugium C, Mega Horn are just ridiculously powerful. Uh, it is able to outspeed the lives of Incineroar and able to set up with Soul Sands and whatnot. So Samurott has a lot of really strong niches. The only thing holding it potentially back is Helolisk, which is a natural speedier threat that can force it out. But as a whole, Samurott was already noted in Generation 6 and are you for being very very capable of dealing with the massive threats there such as of course slow bro and slow king uh, due to sword stance and megahorn it now has c to capitalize on that then well we should celebrate that i'm really glad to see samurai up there getting fair noticed and when it comes to mega bomber snow well it's nothing wrong with that mon one bit uh, it is the sword stance variant it is a slow pokemon that really works well with trick room there are fair trick rumors in and you, but as a soul Pokemon, Soul Stance to get with the likes of Ice Shot and Woodhammer are plenty for most matchups. Uh, and that might actually be the very reason we don't see Torterra <laughs> in and you no more. Now, I couldn't say why uh, Torterra moved all the way down to CU. Its viability in PU has been fair, to be say the least. In CU, it has Rotom, Frost, watch out for, and that's about it. Uh, there are ice types I guess you'd say in uh, in CU but as a whole seeing it drop from NU is interesting uh, it has uh, been a really good response to a slower and slow king also uh, it could be very well that Samurott is taking that spot now it's a more reliable Pokemon for that kind of a situation depending on the move pools and just overall to Terra besides that aspect of being viable towards a more defensive matchup um, it does kind of struggle if it isn't that and you know that makes total sense um, then we have Sangus and Mushana move from CUBL to PU. I couldn't tell you why they are more relevant than before. Sangus and Mushana are great Pokemon even in NU. Um, clearly Sangus has, you know, Forcer on Toxical, which never really is right. But then you have the possible Billy Drum set uh, to use besides the Toxical, so I want to capitalize on that. Um, I actually think that set is better now that I think about it, but um, it could very well be that people are using Sticker Webs now more reliably or just Sangus is fast enough to break that um, to break that tier as a standing. I really couldn't tell you why. CU is absolutely ridiculously strong, but in PU I just I haven't tried it myself to really, you know, giving a fair assumption of why it works. Uh, then with Musharna, and Musharna really, really has probably taken the spot for what Mesprit was. I do believe Mesprit was moving to NU, so people needed something else in PU. And Musharna, while not. Uh, having able to capitalize on stealth rocks, it still is really good at being really fat and coal mining and whatnot, and just 
like the tier itself really aren't that strong to beat it defensively it could very well set up uh, reliably uh, I've seen people who charge being to go with stored power uh, rest and sleep talk and that should be just about plenty uh, there are other sets also of course the call mine set together with moonlight and uh, I do believe dazzling gleam to go with stored power all of them are fair and works well and um, I just couldn't tell you why it's better in PU this time than before. Uh, also, Musharna, excellent crit rumor. Uh, I can only assume <laughs> that uh, this could have some kind of significance for futures here, because while this ban from CU, it still is, you know, it was PU by default. I'm, I'm rambling clearly. I have no idea why this wasn't there from the get go. Uh, Silver Legos going from CU to PU. CU lost its best defogger by default. I think gonna see um, the Groundium or the Ground Sil Valley or the Poison Sil Valley now from here on out uh, as a defogger, but CU lost its absolute best defogger. Um, Sil Valley goes is quite right. It gets stabbed with, besides his multi attack, it actually gets the likes of Shadow Ball, so it's quite ferocious actually. So, I'm a big fan of actually seeing it moving up. Uh, I think a lot of the Sil Valley forms have, uh, have a lengthy history. Of where specific sets has kind of not getting relegated or defined as well as it should have. Uh, of course, Silver Valley Steel was probably the best form uh, was viable up to UU actually, but just never got in that notice. And uh, it took some time before when we moved to NU where people realized the Silver Valley's natural bulk and stats are good enough here. And it should have moved from there from the get go, just moved up and uh, deviate or differentiate which. Silver was better than the other. Never got to kind of feel for that, and now we get some defilement with Ghost getting separated from the others. But it's still, I think it's too late. I think it should have been refined before. Uh, and then we see from NUBL to RU, these are just Pokemon that gotten more reliable as a whole due to some situations that are going on. First and foremost, Gigalith, my man, my favorite sand setter. It's always been relevant. I think it moved to NU like for a short time, and together with Southland, people just said, "Yeah, this shouldn't continue." <laughs> and that was about it. Um, that going for it, uh, it hasn't been bad in um, in RU at all. It's even viable to an extent here to um, UU, but of course, he proud on is all things considered better. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Like Igalith, it's it's there together with Stoutland. It's a great, easy offensive combo that just works very well. And of course, Gigalith do kind of dent another Pokemon here that got raised up, and that is uh, due to actually Ninetales being so viable in RU with Fire MC. Venusaur naturally falls into category of the best possible chlorophyll sweep to get with Shiftry, and yeah, possibly Victory Bell you could say that. Yeah, but Venusaur overall is. I would say a little bit more reliable, and um, there's where we stand, basically. Uh, when it comes to whole here with uh, Venusaur, it it is as viable as it was before. The growth set together with uh, Solar Beam, Sludge Bomb, and Earthquake, or any to hit a far far. For, for, and anyway, all of these works very well, and also works as defensive Pokemon, but are better defensive Pokemon Grass types, like for example Shaman in that significant tier. However. It is important to kind of notice that Venusaur has a lot of layers to it. It might not, must not be the most powerful Pokemon you ever see. It doesn't mean it's bad. And it's RU, yeah, in, in the Sun support, it could be very tough to kind of kind of push back. Um, then we have uh, Ribambi. I mean, it's a freaking OU Pokemon at times. The stick web teams in OU use Ribambi. There is just it just works as well in UU and in RU, and well, the reason it's not in NU is because, well, it's actually carrying Quiver Dance, so it, it, it destroys so many teams naturally. Uh, so really happy to kind of see Ribomba getting some significant relevance here. As stated, it is viable for any stick web team, so its definition by Smogon is not worth anything towards the team design that you do for individual tiers. It's really just going to have that mentioned. And then we got Hoopa Confined. Uh, I really couldn't, couldn't tell you why it got in that race. It is a super underrated Pokemon, however, and you know, yeah, it's weak to Ghost. Yeah, it dies to a pursuit, absolutely. But besides that, it really has nothing that goes against it. 
It has, I believe, two immunities and a plethora of resistance a natural, highly special defensive bulk. Really strong Assault Vest user and actually a very, very strong Quick Room Setter. Uh, while it is the slowest Pokemon in the game, it still has a relevance as a really slow Pokemon with, uh, with Trick Room, Nasty Blast, Focus Blast, with Fight UMC. There are a lot of things this Pokemon can do. It can go physical, sub substitute with Focus Punch, or even go with Fire Punch. Um, sure, there are Pokemon that are walling it and possibly takes it out, but needs to take it out on the physical side. Um, Hoopa has the luxury of, while being hit super effectively, it might actually do that special defensive bolt not be forced to actually be taken out. So overall, Hoopa's downside would say is possibly is a low physical bulk, but as a whole, it is a Pokemon that is very hard to deal with head-on, and it has a, such a broad move pool that I would say its downfall is that it doesn't have one defining set that makes it worse versus every matchup. But yeah, argue it is, and it's definitely gonna stay there. Um, I've been used to myself in UU with really good success, there's nothing wrong with Hoopa. Um, but like I said, matchup issues here with Pursuit is something that I would say people avoid a Pokemon due to this. It, it should be said, uh, Colbert Bear together with Magician is is kind of nasty. Um, we've seen Envy use this not too long ago, uh, and all I really can say is that that's that's a set that should be used more often because it works, and it's all about knowing the matchups. So really, without that, this is like I said, this, the last kind of real Smogon update that I'll do for. Um, Ultra Sun and Moon. Moving on, we're going to a course, Sword and Shield, and we'll see when this Pokemon updates happen from there. Basically, that process is much tougher because it's deviated to OU to UU. And it's always a pleasure seeing which Pokemon that didn't make the cut for UU that's just gonna absolutely destroy that tier 2. Uh, so that process takes forever. Hopefully, it goes smoother this time around than it did, than, uh, it did um, in Sun and Moon. It took roughly a year before the um, tiers kind of stagnated, and that was a long time. Um, that said, thank you for all for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care.